So thank you very much for coming to see us today. Um, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the history of your asthma and your ABPA? Uh, yeah, as far as I know, I've been an asthmatic from birth. I used to have lots of asthma attacks uh, as a child. Uh, and I was diagnosed with uh, ABPA uh, at 14. I had a collapsed lung, I'd been coughing up lots of horrible uh, sputum for months and months beforehand, but thinking it was normal. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I ended up being in hospital for a month and a half, and uh, and yeah, it's, 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 it's quite scary <laughs> as a teenager. And so how were you treated when, when you started with uh, a diagnosis of ADPA? Uh, steroids. I've, I've been on steroids from then on really till I was um, you know, 39, 40. Yeah. Right, so. okay. And how have you coped with that? How have you managed? Um, it's, been, it's been pretty horrible really. I um, was on a beer booster course probably six or seven times a year, which being on steroids sort of but 30, 40 milligrams at a time, and then coming back down was wasn't quite very nice, particularly for my family, who've described me as being psychotic while I've been on steroids. But yeah, and obviously there's all the side effects with being on steroids for that length of time as well. And I've got quite thin skin, and and, and there's lots of other things as yes. well. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and did you start any antifungal treatment, and when did you start it? Um, in. Um, 2007 8 I think I started on etraconazole um, uh, sort of oral tablets um, and um, they they didn't really make a great deal of difference I think it, it meant that I was on I still had to have booster courses of steroids probably five six times a year um, but um, in um, 2008, I, I made this decision that I like, would like another child, so I wanted to try and get pregnant. On etraconazole, obviously, I couldn't because they have quite, you know, bad, potentially bad effects for, for unborn children. Uh, so I went to discuss options, and there didn't seem to be any at the time. So my uh, then consultant um, uh, sent me over to see Professor Denning. Uh, and um, he came up with the idea of um, nebulised amphotericin, which um, I, th I think it had been tried maybe once or two or a few times before, but it was very much experimental. Um, but pr prior to that, um, in June 2008, I'd, I'd come off etraconazole uh, and slowly but surely started to get quite unwell. Uh, the idea of coming off the, the drug was so I could then try and get pregnant. Um, and uh, in, I think it was Oct September, October 2008, started on the amphotericin, uh, the nebulised amphotericin. Um, then, um, unfortunately, I think I'd just started to get too poorly for, for that to work, but got really ill, ended up on steroids, antibiotics and everything else. Uh, but continued on the nebulised amphotericin on a higher dose. So I was on 12.5 milligrams twice a day. Uh, and uh, by January, I was feeling really well again, January 2009, and haven't looked back since. I've been really well uh, ever since. I've not had to have steroids at all. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been really good health-wise. And what dose of that are you taking now? I'm take, I'm actually, I've actually made the decision to try and reduce it to get on as little as possible. Um, I wasn't having any side effects, but I'm again thinking of potential pregnancy uh, because it's quite, you know, it's an unknown entity really. So yeah, I'm on 12.5 on just once a day now. So you've reduced it by half yes, during that yeah, period and of two years. Yeah, and it's been, and I'm absolutely fine. No, it's not made any difference at all. So. Um, all right. Um, can you describe what it's like using the nebulizer? Um, yeah. I th when I when I first started, I was a bit worried about the length of time it would take because obviously I, I work and have a child and. You know, it's quite a busy lifestyle, and um, but yeah, I, it kind of just it, it, I just got into the routine of it, and it just fit in with your normal daily routine. So I, I would have it as soon as I got up in the morning, and then last thing at night. Um, and now I just have it uh, in the morning, uh, and uh, it's yeah, it's 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 quite easy 
easy to take. Um, when I first started taking, I first started nebulising, I used to cough a lot, probably for several months, I used to cough a lot, an awful lot of stuff up. But I think that was actually a good thing because after that, I had, I mean, for now, I hardly cough at all, if at all. So um, it's, it's not bad at all. Um, now, do you know anything about your antibody levels? Have they changed during that period of time? Yes, uh, they've always been pretty much off the scale, and now they, you know, they are going down for the first time ever over this last couple of years, which is great news. Yeah. And on the so whole, you feel extremely well. I feel extremely well. Yes. Yeah. Um, which nebulizer systems have you used? Um, I started off using the vent stream, and in fact, I used that up until June two thousand and eleven. Uh, and it, again, it, it worked really well, apart from the fact that I used to get quite a lot of the, the solution uh, in my mouth. Uh, and again, I was a little bit concerned about that. Um, yeah, but um, So I, in June, when I came here last, um, I was uh, offered the, the parry system, which uh, works brilliantly and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't sort of... Um, I, I don't get any of the, the solution into my mouth now, it's all, you know, nebulised, which is great. So yeah, it works really well. Okay, thank you very much for coming thank and you. talking to us today.